Hello everybody and welcome back and in this video we will code our vulnerability scanner. So as I said what we'll be doing is we'll actually perform the same port scanning while retrieving the banners from the open ports and also after that we want to add a function which will check those banners with a text file that contains vulnerable software banners. So I made that file right here so if you notice uh, vulnerbanners.txt, if I nano it, what I have right here is a bunch of some gibberish right here and then at the third position I have the uh, banner from the SSH port from our Metasploitable which is the one that we received in the previous video with our return banner uh, program. Then after that I also have something which doesn't make any sense just so we have multiple things in the file itself. So right now let us actually nano the file that we will create or the program that we will create. Let's call it wallscan.py and we will start off with the same line as in every program so user bin python and we need to actually import three libraries for this program. Uh, one of them is the regular socket library which allows us to actually perform the connection and to receive the data from the target. Uh, the other one is the uh, library that we will use in order to check whether the specified file of vulnerable banners exists or not and whether we actually can execute it or read from it or not. We will use, uh, we will use the OS uh, library to do that. This OS library comes with some functions that allow us to check whether the file exists so that's why we are using it. And the last library is the sys library which we will use in order to check out the number of arguments specified in the command of the program. Since we will specify uh, the command or basically what I imagine this program to be is something like this. So when you run it from your terminal you will run it like this. So volscan.py and after that you want to specify uh, vulnerability banners.txt. So I want the so we want the command of the uh, program itself to be volscan and then the name of the file from which we want to read the vulnerable banners. So let me just delete this right now and let's see how we can actually code that. First of all uh, what we want to do is actually code our main function so def main two dots and the first thing we want to check out is to use uh, the sys library in order to check whether we have the correct number of arguments specified in the command itself. So if you count the arguments, uh, the first one is the name of the file and the second one is the name of the file that we will use from the uh, for the vulnerable banners. So there are at the total there are two arguments, as I said, one the name of the program and one the name of the file. So we want to check if length of the number of arguments, so sys argv, equals to 2, which it should equal to 2, we want to have two arguments, we want to first of all uh, set the file name, which is the file of our vulnerable banners, to be argument under the number 2, so sys.argv and then at slot 1. Now you might be asking once again why are why am I saying that it is an argument number two and then in the bracket specifying one? Well, I will remind you that in Python counting actually starts from zero. So the first argument will be the argument or the name of our program itself, and it will be labeled as zero. Then the second argument will be the file name, and it will be named as one. Right now, when we said that the file name is argument uh, two we want to check whether that uh, file even exists. So maybe the user specified the file name wrongly and we want to, chain to check whether that file exists. So if we will use if not os.path is a file, so is file and we need to specify in the brackets file name since that is the file that we are using. So this basically means if this file doesn't exist or, or if this isn't a file we want to print uh, minus file doesn't exist. Oops, okay, so like this. Then we want to exit the program itself with zero. We also want to check whether the user has permissions to read from that file, so we can do that 
with this if not os.access. So if we do not have access to the file name and then os.r underscore OK, we want to print access denied. Since, for example, maybe the user is trying to run this file as a simple user and the text file that they want to read from is the root administry or the root privilege file and we cannot read from it. So we will just print access denied and then we will also exit the program itself. So right now, uh, since we checked to possible options, we want to add the else statement to this if statement. So we have the if statement, if the length of the arguments is equal to two, which is correct, uh, then we will check this and proceed to the next part of the code. But if it is not equal to two, that means that the user specified a different number of arguments, whether that is too little arguments or too much arguments. So we want to print the usage so they know what they need to specify. So usage, oops, and then we can do it something like this. Wait a second. So usage plus the string of the program name itself. So we can do that with the sys.argb and then zero since zero is the first argument, which is the program name. And then we want to add a plus. So plus the vulnerable file name. So we can do it like this. What this will print is basically the usage and then the name of the program and then the name of the file or basically this part right here, which will uh, let user know that they need to specify a text file with the vulnerable softwares. So after we print the usage, we also want to exit the program. And in any other case, if actually they specified correct command, we want to continue executing the program. So let's see how we imagine this program to work. Well, first of all, what I will do is I will create a list of ports, the most used ports such as SSH port, FTP port, HTTP port, and so on. And we will actually scan multiple hosts and not just one host. So for example, uh, in the previous videos, we were specifying the IP address of Metasploitable. And right now let's specify for this program to actually scan the entire local host, well, pardon me, local network. So how can we do that? Well, first of all, let us make a port list which will contain 22, 20, uh, 21, 22, uh, 25, 80, for the HTTP, 110, 443. You can add as many ports as you like. I will just leave it on here. And right now we want to actually make a loop that will loop through all uh, to all local machines on our local network. Now, since I don't really want to do all of them right now, well, we'll just scan two or three machines. So we can do that with four X in range. And that let's do from four to six, since my IP address of the, uh, of the Windows 10 machine uh, is ending with number four. The IP address of my Metasploitable is ending with number five. And uh, that's why we are using from four to six, so we can scan those two targets. If you wanted to, for example, scan the entire local network, you would just type from one to 255, since that is the maximum number of hosts available on a local network. But right now we will just leave it on six and four, since we are scanning only two hosts. And we want to set or a variable that uh, so our program can know what the IP address of those hosts are. So we use for X in range. And now we want to set the IP for each loop to be 192.168.1. Then we close the double quotes and add the string of X. Now, why are we doing that? Well, basically, if you have an IP address that one, 192.168.1, we want to loop through this for each X from one to 255. So it will look something like this. Then this X right here will actually change value each loop. So we can scan different targets. So that's the idea. Now, after we did that, we want to actually loop through the ports themselves. So for port in our port list, which is this right here, 
we want to actually uh, run the same function as in the previous program, uh, which is the return banner function. So let's just do that. So for port in port list, banner will equal to return banner with the IP and port uh, as the arguments for that function. And now we check if banner was received. So if banner uh, was received from that certain port, we want to print, uh, so print plus the IP plus the, want to print the slash, so we can separate the slash and the port, or oh, pardon me, the IP and the port. So we want to type the string from the port. So remember that you cannot print an integer. So that's why we use the string from the port number. And then we want to add the banner. Or first of all, we want to add the two dots so we can separate the port and the banner themselves. And now we add the banner. Then. And right now we also need to make a function that will actually check whether this banner is in the vulnerable banners in our txt file. So we will do that with function check dot, uh, pardon me, check ons, which will take an input of the banner and the input of our file name. So the name of the file that we will specify in our command. And these two, which is the red banner and check ons, we will code in the next video. So for now, we coded a good part of the code. We have our uh, main uh, main function right here, which we should actually call down here. And in the next video, we'll code, we'll code the rest of these functions. So hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I see you in the next one. Bye.